Hi, I'm Jeremy and welcome to another episode of Practical IT. In today's episode, we're going to take a quick look and navigate around the Jump Cloud console. For those not familiar with Jump Cloud, it's a directory as a service that relies on LDAP and can connect all major platforms, Linux, Mac, and Windows and you can manage them from the web console basically from anywhere. All right, I'm already logged in to my Jump Cloud console. I've got some uh, users already pre-built. We're gonna add a new user. So we click the plus icon here. And again, I'm gonna create another one with my name and username and email I'm gonna make this a global administrator enable as LDAP LDAP bind DN and it will be enabled in the jump cloud LDAP directory we'll continue and for the purposes of this I'm not going to um, specify an initial password. We're going to uh, forgo that for the moment. Under user groups, um, I've got a couple of groups built there. There's a couple of systems. These are systems I was playing with at work, so they will not be active on my home network. Under directories, it does list just the Jump Cloud LDAP and attributes. If you were importing from a CSV file using the PowerShell uh, connection, you could add custom attributes or you could add them one at a time here. And they are basically key pair values. So let's go back to details and we'll go ahead and save this user. And in a few moments, it will come up with a green check mark next to it. So, uh, under systems, of course, these have the red exclamation point. They're turned off. These are at my uh, work. And so they will not be existent here. We'll come back to that in a few minutes. It's got policies where you can do such things. Let's pick on uh, Linux policies and you can disable um, USB storage so that people cannot plug in USB devices uh, while the machine is up and running. And cancel that. Uh, groups allows you to do groups of users or groups of computers. And let's say we want to do a group of systems. And I'm going to call this home lab. And we're not going to add any systems. We'll go and uh, pop over the users groups. We've got instructors and students and policies that we can all bind together. We will come back and take another look at this in a little bit. We'll save the group. Um, applications, these are for online applications, so you can do single sign-on. Directories, you can connect to Active Directory, G Suite, and Office 365 and sync those users. Commands is kind of fun. You can actually run commands on Linux, Mac, or Windows. Uh, Windows actually gives you the PowerShell option. Um, and But even though PowerShell is available on Mac and Linux, uh, that is not yet a feature here. So we will forgo that for the moment. Radius, uh, I had previously set this up just to play with it. 
Radius will allow you to enable uh, WPA2 Enterprise Wi-Fi security where you can have separate usernames and passwords for each user that logs into your Wi-Fi system. The great part of this is that you don't have to worry about your Wi-Fi quite as much. Whereas if you had a shared SSID and everybody had the same password, people might share that password and then, you know, you're looking at a whole bunch of different security issues. Okay, under settings, you've got general security, um, your organization ID, and password settings that you can apply to all the systems. All right, so I'm going to pause this video and spin up one of my virtual machines and we'll come back and see about adding a system. All right, after some fiddling for a few minutes, I am back in Jump Cloud on the LXLE virtual machine. We'll see how this reacts to being added to Jump Cloud. So we will copy and we will come back to our terminal, paste that in. Fingers crossed, this should install the agent for Jump Cloud. And we should be able to manipulate the system from within Jump Cloud and get our users added to the virtual machine. Okay, so let's see if we do get the processes and grep it and look for JC and then we've got jump cloud agent running. Okay, so if we exit out of that, we now see that our new system. It's Ubuntu base, so it's going to show up as Ubuntu for the OS. If we click on that, we can go to users and we can select which users and we'll select those two and save system. And now our system is showing up LXLE demo, Ubuntu, x8664 it's got the IP address if we go to users and look at the users and systems we will see that it's a global administrator with sudo capabilities and if we do the same thing for this other user Global admin sudo capabilities, jump cloud directory, and we can cancel that. So, one of the cool things you can do is with commands, we can go to new command. This is, in fact, Linux. We can give the command a name system updates select the user we will say this one because I know it's got sudo capabilities and we will say sudo apt get update sudo apt get upgrade dash y sudo apt get auto remove dash y again we're going to leave it set to run manually and we'll go 
system groups, home lab, and make sure our machine is selected. Actually, we'll take off the group. We'll just do a single system, command runners, do that, save command, and then we can select this run now running command and we've got an error uh, no TTY present and no ask pass program specified so we know that it attempted to run, but it did not go through properly. Um, and again, this is the first I'm playing with commands for a Linux system. I've previously, um, in my lab at work, I've uh, run chocolatey updates on Windows machines with no issues. Um, but the, the, uh, Linux commands, this is the first time I've t attempted it. So I will probably revisit this in a future video and see what we can find out. And after consulting the knowledge base, it's probably something simple that, uh, I have missed here. Uh, in fact, let's, let's, uh edit this um, see let's just make this a little easier and we'll pipe that sudo bash save that and we'll give it another run and see if second time works any better I hope in this video you've been able to see that uh, jump cloud can be very useful in a lab environment in a home environment where there's just a handful of users and multiple systems um, with the radius capabilities you can up the security of your wireless um, okay exit code one well, that's a different error message, at least. Uh, could not open lock file. Ver, var lib app list lock. Permission denied. Okay, well, again, we'll revisit this in another video and see where we can get with it. I'm going to delete these for right now because it's obviously not working right. Uh, so, uh, let's take a look. I'm gonna log out of the system here. In this video, we've taken a look at Jump Cloud to see the usefulness of it and looked at adding a system. We have we successfully added a system, uh, which is offline now. Uh, this will update in a moment. Uh, we attempted to run commands, and our first attempt doing that failed, but fear not, we will come back to it and uh, figure out the trick once we've consulted the knowledge base. Um, we will also play with 
uh, future in future videos we will also play with groups and potentially with policies and just see what we can do with the system and um, learn its capabilities for the benefit of all of you out there in YouTube land. Until next time, this is Jeremy signing off for Practical IT. If you like this video, please subscribe, click the bell icon to be notified of future videos, leave comments, and again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.